Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Join us now to hear great and mighty things that have happened in the lives of people who have been changed through our Lord Jesus as they share their testimonies of how God answers prayer. Welcome to God Answers Prayer. I'm Linda Cobb, your host today, and we are joyful in the Lord today. We are excited about what He has for us, and here in Santa Fe, New Mexico, we've got rain coming down, which we are so thankful for uh, after such a dry period of time, and we continue to lift all of those of you that are in other areas of the country that are having issues with the drought, and we, we do continue to pray for rain over your land as well. I have a scripture that is found in the book of Psalms 104 verses 6 through 9 that I would like to share with you and we've been making our way through this Psalms um, and starting at verse 6 it says you covered it with the deep as with a garment the waters stood above the mountains at your rebuke they fled at the voice of your thunder they hastened away and we had begun this psalm, which was, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. And uh, we're going to go on to verses 8 and 9 in just a moment. But just to bring you up here, um, Who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters and who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind, who makes his angels spirits, his ministers a flame of fire. And then today, you who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever, you covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke, they fled. At the voice of your thunder, they hastened away. In verses eight and nine, they went up, over the mountains they went down into the valleys to the place which you founded for them you have set a boundary that they may not pass over that they may not return to cover the earth and we remember the boundaries that were made after the flood of noah when he promised to never again cause the waters to cover the earth but what a what a beautiful psalm and as we read it and we think on the majesty and the power of the Most High God. How can we not worship Him who created all things, who created us for His pleasure, that we would be His worshipers and enter into relationship with Him through the shed blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. So today, as we go through the interview today, we, we just want you to reflect on the difference that you hear. If you have not made that decision to say yes to the great gift of love through Yeshua that our Father gave us, then I pray that today you hear something that quickens, it, it just strikes deep within you, and you say, you know what, I need that. I need to have that difference in my life. We are very wonderfully happy today that Amy Amy Allen, who is the founder of uh, A Redeemed Marriage, is here with us, and we are excited about what she's going to be sharing. For those of you that may have struggles in your marriage, or maybe it's good marriage, but you'd like for it to be better, you definitely want to stay tuned. And for those of you that are even considering marriage, this is a good message, a good time to listen to the experiences of someone who has been down a road and we can learn from what the experiences are that they have had. So I know you'll want to stay tuned and maybe even call a friend up. Today we have a song with Christ for the Nations, Love Song. Thank 
And that was Christ for the Nations here on God Answers Prayer with Love Song. And uh, we want to welcome Amy Allen here today with us. Amy, it's so good to have you. Thank you, it's great to be here. Um, and the name of your ministry is A Redeemed Marriage. So let us get to know you and, and uh, tell us about growing up and um, how you came to faith. Okay, well, I'm from the Midwest mm -hmm. and my husband is as well. And we met when I was 15 years old. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> we met at a church camp and we both grew up going to a Lutheran church. And so baptized as a baby, you know, confirmed in eighth grade, all of that. Uh, but it wasn't until we were married for about five years that things in our marriage started to fall apart. And um, if anyone's familiar with pornography being mm -hmm. brought into the home. That's what happened with us. And it started on the internet and then it grew to, he had an affair and I caught him and kicked him out of the house. We came back together and I thought it was perfect because finally for the first time in our married lives, we prayed together for the first time. And I thought, this is great. Started going back to church but um, a year and a half later, we moved to the Washington DC area. We had been living in San Diego. Mm -hmm. My husband's in the military, so he's Navy. And when we got there about a week and a half after we arrived, I found out he had been going to prostitutes for a year and a half Aww. without me realizing it. So I really felt that that was my out. I had been praying about that. And I left him <clears throat> and I moved back to San Diego. And it was there that God started working in both of our lives and got a hold of us. And we both came to true faith in Jesus. You know, and, and let's talk a little bit about what happens when pornography is introduced into a home. Because a lot of times people think, ah, oh, you know, it's, it's no biggie. But it opens a door it does. And for dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it really violates the covenant. It does, and I, I want to speak about that because I didn't think it was a big deal either. And he looked at Playboys and he had been introduced to them when he was about nine years old. Mm. It was on his grandparents' farm and his grandpa had them just out in the open. So that was the first time he was introduced and it just, it does, it gets hooks in you mm -hmm. and it stays. And I didn't, being a modern woman, I didn't think it was a big deal either. And I allowed Playboys in our home when we were first married. I really didn't think it was a big deal. I let him go to a strip club with a friend. I thought that was me being, you know. Real open-minded, yeah. yes. But I didn't realize what it can do. And his, his, everything starts out slow. And Satan will make you take steps till you get to a place where you thought you'd never go. And that's what happened with my husband. And um, it started out where he was on a, a ship and they went to Cabo San Lucas and there a woman had it in her mind that she was going to get my husband to sleep with her and uh, so they 
she seduced him and uh, he fell for it and then he liked that feeling. Mm -hmm. So he tried to reproduce it by you know, chatting with people on the internet and things like that. And then one thing leads to another and he had, he flew a woman in from out of town just to have sex with her right when I was even still in town <laughs> and I didn't realize it, so right under my nose. And so all these, these steps that, that lead you away until I, I talk about it, I, it's like stepping down into a dark basement. Mm -hmm. And if you look back, if you take a few steps, you can see the light pretty clearly. But as you keep going down, 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 it gets darker and it's harder to go look back up and see that light. Right. And that's what was happening in his life. And a lot of it was unbeknownst to me. I could feel something right. was wrong, mm -hmm. but I wasn't completely aware until God, right. God did reveal that to me about the prostitutes. And yeah. So. And, you know, it's, it, it's really a difference between the realm of death and the realm of light and, and of life. And life, you know, is to be found through the Word and through relationship with Yeshua. Absolutely. But uh, the things that are, are, are so contrary and the enemy um, wants to draw us into that area so that there is not relationship because we were, you know, we were created for relationship, but he wants it to be perverted. Yes. So you, um, you said that you went back to San Diego and the Lord began to deal with you. Now he was still in Washington, right? Or did he yeah. follow you back? Oh, no, no. He knew it was over. He knew, um, he had, I found a journal he wrote. I had left him and then I said, you know, wrote him a letter goodbye. And then I found a journal the next day he'd written and he said, I know it's over. I screwed it up, and um, I'm, I'm I'm happy because I can go pursue this life that I think is important. And but I'm sad because I'm losing my best friend. So he he knew it was over. I really felt it was over, but God but said no. it's not. And so what happened was when I moved back to San Diego, a friend invited me to her church, and it was just a Bible-based church and I went and the sermon was called keeping your focus on Jesus mm -hmm. and it just went straight to my heart and I started crying then I open up the bulletin and it says on this coming Wednesday a women's Bible study was starting and it was called keeping your dreams when you're keeping your focus when your dreams have been shattered oh, wow. so it might as well have wow. said dear Amy take this love God <laughs> and I did yeah. and it was in that that um, I really got deep into the Word of God. It was a precept study, and it was the story of Joseph mm. and how his brothers had sold him into slavery, and they meant it for evil, but God used it for good. Yeah. And so that's what he started doing in my life, and he opened up my eyes. I realized that there was something more, that I didn't have a deep relationship with the Lord. I had a... Uh, you knew about Him. Yeah, <laughs> but I didn't. And I didn't obey and I didn't follow what it was he wanted me to do. So I knew I needed to surrender, but it was hard and it was a process because I was afraid to give up control. Mm -hmm. But finally I did and that's when he just started changing my life. And he did the same for my husband on opposite coasts. Really? Yeah, he was in D.C. and I was in San Diego and he worked on my husband as well. So did he, did he send somebody along to him as well? or What happened was he, um, his father gave him ultimatums of what he needed to do and, or else he was going to tell the Navy about what was going on and get him kicked out of the Navy. So oh, wow. some of it was he needed so a psychiatrist. I mean, how did his dad know? I told Oh, them. okay. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. one of my things I kind of no, told I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, you had a relationship there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so anyway, um, that's what helped Tim keep motivated. He didn't want to lose his job mm -hmm. with the Navy. So he went to a psychologist and he found a um, Sexaholics Anonymous group that he was going to go to. But what happened was one night when that group, he tried to go and it wasn't um, meeting and he was very upset. He went to, he was going to act out again, you know, with the prostitute, mm -hmm. but he thought, no, that's what I usually do. So he went to, instead he went to a um, bookstore. And he went to the religious section, and uh, <laughs> there on the shelf was a book by Philip Yancey called The Jesus I Never Knew. Mm. And he, th he saw it, and he thought, maybe I don't know Jesus. And so God used that book to really open his eyes to who Jesus is. And um, one night when he was alone in our house in the basement, <laughs> is where he was staying, um, 
God showed him, he said, he made it very clear. He had a picture of if you continue on the path that you want to continue on, it was complete and utter darkness. And so he knew he had to make a choice. And he knew what he was reading about Jesus and in the Bible was truth and that he had to make a choice. And so when that night he just broke down and cried and gave his life to the Lord. And so all of, you know, and, and, and once you've done that, then there's get some house cleaning basically oh, that yes. begins to have to take place. Tell us about that. It's a, a long process. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, God can heal instantly. Absolutely. Um, but it also, sometimes it's a process. But, so but the decisions that we make, the choices of our will, um, we have to do some work. Absolutely. So after six months apart, mm-hmm. it, God was making it clear that we should come back together. I was scared. <laughs> so you've been, been talking and corresponding. Yes, we were. We, we talked via email usually. Mm-hmm. And it was nice because for the first time in our marriage, we were truly open with each other because there was nothing to lose. Right. You know, we'd already filed for divorce. Mm-hmm. That was another neat thing is God kept holding back the paperwork. <laughs> it never, the paperwork would never go through. Um. And so we knew we were supposed to get back together. And so we did, and I moved back to Maryland and to be with him. And it was, it was hard. It was really, really hard, but there was so much growth. And what we did is we just completely immersed ourselves in God's Word. Uh, we went to two churches, <laughs> one Saturday night, one Sunday. And, um, we, and we were in a, a few Bible studies and just being cleansed and immersed in God's Word and that is really what changed our lives and so when we would read about in his word what we were to do Mm -hmm. then we started obeying and then we could see the changes and the growth in our lives now all during this time i mean this was over how many years of marriage well the i guess i found out about everything in around the fifth year Uh of marriage and then on the eighth our eighth right before our eighth wedding anniversary is when i left we were separated so now we've been married 19 years this summer. Okay. And so there's a so, lot of growth through that time. And so the, the, the good thing too is that there were, there were no children in the marriage at that time, right. right? In fact, we got married under the pretense that we were never going to have children. Mm-hmm. Neither one of us wanted children. And God actually started working on my husband's heart first. Really? Yeah. And um, so we just, uh, I went off birth control and then just trusted the Lord and he gave us our first child when we were in Bangkok, Thailand. Really? We were stationed in Bangkok, Thailand <laughs> shortly after about two and a half years after coming back together. And we just thought that was the biggest joke. How could you know, God send us to the sex capital of the world after <laughs> all that we'd been through? But God used it. And it was, it was a huge test for Tim, and it was very hard, um, especially on him. But um, God strengthened our, both of our faith yeah. our faith and our walk with him through that and our our daughter was born there and oh and, yeah. and, and our you. second was born when that's another trial that we went through but um tim went to iraq for a year ah. with the military and our second child was born while he was gone oh. but god gave her to us on our 16th wedding anniversary really? isn't that neat oh <laughs> i just love it because on our eighth anniversary it was when we separated and then eight years later, see, God redeems. Yes, he does. And God gives back what... Yeah, well, they say the number eight is new beginnings. Mm. So uh, he's wor- he was working consistently on that. Mm-hmm. That is very good. It, yeah. So that makes you start looking forward to what he's going to do next. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, during... during um, the time that you were actually preparing for this interview, I know that the Lord really began to show you some things. Tell us about that. It's about being persistent in prayer. Mm -hmm. God really does answer prayer. It's not always the way that we think it should be, but he he is listening and he always, always answers. And he specifically spoke to me about, I was, we were able to meet with my parents this last weekend and we met up in Colorado. They're from Omaha and we're in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. So I had just started telling her all the things that I had done as a child that she didn't have any idea about. And she said, oh, 
but I was praying for you, you know, and, I, and she was. She's consistent in prayer. Every morning she gets up and she reads her devotions and spends time with the Lord, and she has a little prayer book, and she writes prayers in it and, and answers. And so she prayed fervently for all three of her children. I'm the oldest, and I needed those prayers. Um, unbeknownst to her, I had started drinking at age 13. Oh, wow. And I became what I call as a, a binge alcoholic. I drank on the weekends um, to the point where I'd either pass out or um, throw up or you know, black out. And, um, my, and Tim my, was my boyfriend at the time, and he always took care of me. And this was a hidden secret. No one knew. I was an honor student. Um, no one would ever know from the outside. Uh, but I was doing all these things, and that didn't stop until I surrendered my life to the Lord. I did not have a control over alcohol, but uh, He delivered me from that at that really? at that time of surrender. So that's an example of immediate healing where I didn't have yes. a desire for alcohol right. anymore. So and so, but I mean, that was what my mom was praying. She didn't know what she was yeah, praying specifically yeah. for, but. So, I mean, all this time, even after marriage and when he was going through his things, that, that must have triggered even more than in, in your heart or your, the need for this substance because you didn't turn to the Lord. Right. Right. Yeah, I was, uh, I actually used alcohol as a form of getting attention. Oh, really? And that is... And that's what I realized now, is that I was seeking attention. And my husband's very um, calm, and you know he doesn't show emotion very easily. And so I was always trying to get his attention, too. Mm -hmm. And so I'd flirt with other guys and drink to excess. And it was a way to get to that point of where all eyes were on me. And it, was, it wasn't always good. a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I realize that now, and I've seen others you know, that are inebriated at places, and it's not pretty. And yeah. that was me, and I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. And, um, you know, the, the Word says that w when we give our lives to the Lord, He gives us the power to say no to sin. That's right. And That's prior right. to that, I didn't have that power. And so as you started into the ladies' Bible study and going to church, uh, you said, because you said, really, the desire just left you. It did. So you didn't, you really weren't even put in a place maybe well, of having to say no? Well, no, let me, let me go back because there was a women's retreat. I'd never been on a women's uh -huh. retreat shortly after I came back together with Tim. And there was, there was temptation. Mm -hmm. We actually, the retreat was next. We went to a restaurant that had a bar attached to it. And the music was pounding and the, you know, the drinks were flowing. And I did. I had this overwhelming urge to go uh, and partake in all that frivolity, you know, and right. I thought, wow, you know, and the urge was so strong, but I shared it with another friend there, and I'd just met her, but I shared with her, and that lessened the load, and she, she prayed for me, and others prayed for me, mm. and so I was learning to, what to do with temptation when it comes, and to go to others yes. to lift me up in prayer, to go straight to the Lord, to ask for strength, right. those kind of things. And so, no, it's true. Yeah. I did have temptation, but it did lessen over time. Yeah. And he removed the desire. The more that, that you took a stand, mm -hmm. uh, then till it was just totally gone. You know, and that's, a, that's an important thing, too, is the accountability factor. Um, because the, uh, the tactics of the enemy is to keep everything secret. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you expose things to the light, when they have to come out into the open, then they're going to have to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you were willing to do that. You were willing to be transparent. Yes, and I try to still do that because uh -huh. I know it's so important. That's why I'm here. Yeah. And, and I speak very frankly about my struggles. My husband is fine with me speaking of his yeah. because we just want to bring honor and glory to the Lord and help others Absolutely. see this is what, not that a, nothing's impossible. Uh, exactly. And, and you know, there are so many people out there that struggle exactly like this, mm -hmm. that have the same type of things happening and they are keeping it secret because they don't know what to do and they're ashamed. Sure. 
And so to That's, hear somebody like you that comes and, and is willing to open up and share and say, look, there are answers. It's glorious. It's beautiful that God can totally restore a person. Yes, and that, that is what I want to share. I mean, God can do anything. Nothing's impossible for Him. He can meet you exactly where you are and save you I, from yourself. That's where I feel exactly. I'm saved from myself, yeah. from my Absolutely. sin. Absolutely. So, so um, tell us a little bit more, too, about uh, now Tim was, was in the military. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when did you when did you come to Albuquerque? Oh, it was only about two two years ago. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we chose to retire here. He retired from the Navy uh -huh. after 20 years in June. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty fresh, but it was really neat because, like I said, he spent a year in Iraq, and while he was there, God spoke very clearly to him that time is fleeting, and that not to look for another job, but to stay at home with our two girls and to really pour into their lives and I am so proud of him oh, for doing that that's I mean I just can't yeah emphasize that enough well um, I, you, you've talked about the answer to prayer in marriage what are some of the other and, and the answer to prayer over the uh, the alcohol addiction mm -hmm. what are some other answer prayers well um, shortly after we got back together I, I'm a graphic designer by oh, trade, okay. so I'm an artist, and I had created a line of little characters, and at first they were called amiables, but the name, I couldn't get trademarked, and I was very upset about that, but through the process of humbling me and bringing to my knees before the Lord, God gave me a new name for the business, and it's called Humble Bumbles, Oh, <laughs> and so I just, I just love it, and that trademark just flew through the process, so... That was really neat. But uh, I had published a children's book in San Diego through someone that I had met, and he published his own books. And he approached me and asked me if I would do a baby journal with using my Humble Bumbles characters. So I prayed about it, and I thought, okay, yeah, I'd like to. Well, I knew that my, my mission now is to pair God's Word with my artwork. Yeah. Everything, because it, it doesn't return void. It goes, mm -hmm. what God wants to do with it is His business, and He can do so many things. So I... I knew I was going to put scripture in the baby journal, and I did, but my publisher wasn't so keen on that idea, and he wanted me.